like I said, I'm Steve, Joe, uh, we're St. Pete Design, uh, we're a web development company in St. Pete, and um, basically we do custom uh, software for WordPress. So with that said, uh, this is our talk, um, how to easily audit, audit your website for accessibility issues. We kind of have a kind of a WordPress uh, uh, accessibility made easy for WordPress segment, and the part one is understanding accessibility. This is part two of that series. We're going to actually go through and show you how we portions of how we actually audit sites, all with free tools. Everything's completely free. So a few facts: we got one in four American adults have some sort of disability. That's pretty. That's pretty staggering. There are over 250 million people with a vision, a, a vision disability, a specific disability. And we can imagine that vision is, is the one with the biggest hurdle for the internet. Um, and as you mentioned, we can make a difference. WordPress runs over a third of the internet. And the closest second CMS is at like 7%. So we're, if you want to make a difference, WordPress is where it's at. And then in 2015, there were 57 ADA lawsuits. Last year, there were over 2,000, over 2,200 lawsuits for accessibility. It's happening. They are su uh, suing companies now for their websites not being accessible, just like they have over the last few decades, suing brick and mortar um, businesses for not being accessible. All right, well, the first one we're gonna use is this is the accessibility audit in Chrome developer tools. And this is the link. I just made a short code for it, but if you're using Chrome, um, you really don't have to do a whole lot to it. You just have to open that website in Chrome. Okay, I give you the, the easy steps here, but that's really just for reference. I'm gonna go through each step coming up here. So step number one is go to your website if you want to audit, right click your mouse. This will pop up, choose inspect. Step two, at the top, when you choose accept, um, inspect, this is what pops up. How many of us are, are familiar with this? You guys ever dealt with this? Yeah, so, so we know what this is. Well, this will pop up. At the top here, you're gonna come here, see little marks, this window will pop up and you're gonna choose audit. Step number three, this is what pops up, this is what your area turns into when you choose audits. Okay, you're gonna wanna uncheck everything except accessibility, because Google Chrome is pretty pretty cool. It, it'll run a performance audit, you know, uh, best practice audit, SEO audit, all kinds of things. Um, so uncheck all of them. For mobile, what we'll do is we'll run a mobile and then run a desktop. They're typically the same. Sometimes mobile will have some spacing issues that a, a desktop won't have, but they're pretty much the same. So uncheck all of them except for accessibility. Or vice versa, sometimes desktop we even seen will have problems that right. the mobile site doesn't have. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's the, pro that's the problem with it. Literally, it was dealing with that this <laughs> morning. So. Uh, then you just scroll down and you run audit. I mean, it's that simple. Google Chrome will run the audit for you. This is what happens. Pops up like this. Pretty cool, they give you an actual grade. This is the only software program that we've dealt with that gives you a grade. Um, tells you how well you are. This site is doing really well. I think it was WordPress.com or .org. Yeah. Um, and then, but it does say you've got a background of foreground colors, don't have sufficient contrast ratio. Now I've looked at this and I can't find where that error is. So I'm gonna assume this is another false positive. And that's one thing you've gotta watch out for, false positives. Um, but, with that being said, they give you a lot of great information. And then the cool thing, the unique thing that Google Chrome does that the rest of them don't do, is they give you this, additional items to manually check. And then it pops this down. And all of these are the same. Every, every web page you go to, they'll always give you the same one, but it does give it to you. And you can click it, and it'll expand, give you a definition of it, and uh, give you some ideas. But this is really a very helpful list. So you know, utilize that, not just the audit portion of it. Okay, now we got the wave evaluation tool. Um, again, this is the one through three steps, but I'm going to explain each one. So that's just, that's just there for reference. You can go back and check it out. Step one, very simply go to the website. It's wave.webaim.org. 
that to enter the URL. This is it right here. So whatever site you want to test, you're just going to copy paste your URL right there. And then you're going to hit enter. And that's it. I mean, and that's literally it. And then it goes to... But then... Okay, yeah, you also... It's a little easier. Or it's an even easier or it has easy. If you're using Chrome, there's an extension for Wave. So you can download the Wave extension and all you have to do is click the W and it'll do exactly what... Yeah, right. When you're on, you're already when you're on your page. If you don't have Chrome, do it the, the first way. If you got Chrome, use use this. So once you once it runs its test, usually it takes about 15, 20 seconds. This is what it looks like. It spits it out. It gives you your page. <clears throat> it tells you how many errors, how many alerts, and how many uh, you know basically everything that's on your site. And then it'll come over here and it'll explain them. It'll it points them out to you. So this one, this one says it has no errors. If you remember, Google said WordPress had one error. This one says it has no errors. So you, you instantly get inconsistencies immediately. Come down here to alerts, and then it tells you. Skip heading levels. It'll mark them in yellow, and then it'll come down here, and it'll, and it'll, point, it'll point your headers out. Redundant links, it'll point them out. So this is a very useful tool, but remember, you're gonna get false positives. And another thing you wanna keep in mind is, up here, right here, this is giving a full accessibility test. So this is running full WCAG 2.1 guidelines. You will not need that when you're running tests on this. So you'll click that and it gives you an option to choose section 508. So if you use this tool. Yeah, I was gonna say, what is this measuring against? Right now, it's measuring it gets everything. WCAG 2.0, WCAG 2.1. Not little things that just pass and not get sued. Yours is like against the whole this is way, thing. This is against WCAG. Right, that's beyond the getting sued point. Um, so what you want to do is in that little box, click that, it'll pop up, and you click to Section 5, it'll say Section 508. And now when it's running your test for errors against those guidelines and standards. So, which are less which are less in which we're worried about in America, basically. Um, and that's gonna save you a lot of time. You know, I spent a lot of time going through every error going, golly, yeah. these don't seem to be section 508 errors. What's the problem? And then I realized, oh, it's because it's, it's giving me every error that it could be. So learn from my mistakes. Okay. Um, let's see here. And it's just, we just kind of scroll down on the page just to give you other stuff. Again, it's labeling, you know, your H2. You see here you got H1, H3. It doesn't like that. It likes your accessibility standards should be H1, H2, H3. It doesn't, it's saying, that's why it's pointing this out. It's saying, hey, you're missing a header. You went straight from H1 to H3. There should be an H2 in between here. So are you serious? You gotta redesign this thing? Or you would make that H3 and H2? I, I, if I was redoing this, I would just make this the H2 or make that the H2. But you know, so it's kind of a redesign, but not really. You can play with it. You know, same thing down here. So the next section, it's saying, hey, wait a minute, you're starting with an H2. You wanna work your way down. It's, it's just saying you're missing a, pre a previous level of The main thing um, is you wanna be H1 above H2 above H3. Correct. So. And if you see up here, if you notice on this screenshot, I've chosen section 508. So it, it, you know, it's it's saying it's accurate. It's, accurate. it's telling it's, it's running up against section five away. So and it, and you you can work your way down as well. Um, a lot of these are false positives. So you really kind of have to. That's why we use multiple tools. If you use one tool, you're going to be here all day long checking everything. So we try to use multiple tools, and we'll start to see common things. If one tool is pointing something out, uh, and the other tools aren't pointing something out. You know, we generally think that's that's a false positive. If two, you know, two are pointing them out, one's not. We think that might be a false negative. So, you know, it's it's that it's that ballet game. It's plus once you get more familiar with the, the rules for section five way and whatnot, it becomes quicker. Absolutely, you can look right at skip heading levels, and I can look at the site and go bang. Okay, here's those. You can look for it's missing empty alt tags, null or empty alt tags. You can check that real quick and just see. You know, these are very easy things to check. And once, like I said, once you get into your rhythm, if you're a developer, if you have multiple sites, once you do it the first time, number two, number three, number four, just fall in line. Because you're used to it, you know what you're looking for now. 
Okay. All right. Another tool that we use is the alley tool, the A11Y. And what we've done is we've incorporated that in with our plugin. So this is a link to our plugin because it has the Wally tool. But our plugin's completely free, not a freemium, but completely free, always will be free. So we just try to take the best tools that we find through our process and incorporate them into one tool that developers can download and use for free. <laughs> So anyways, you download, you, you can, you're in the back of your site, um, you go to plugins, you download our plugin, it's, uh, it's WordPress, it's WP Accessibility Tools and Alt Text Finder. We set it in settings down here, Accessibility Tools. And this is what it looks like. This is the Accessibility Audit portion of it. And all you gotta do is you hit Start Accessibility Audit and Save Changes. And it'll, and it'll, it'll start doing its thing. At this point, once you hit save changes, you just gotta go to the front end of your site, you know, logged in and everything. And then what we do is we stick this down here. This is, a, you click this, this is a little sunglass icon. You click this and a menu expands. This will be, this will be on the page when you're previewing. That's what it looks like. Yeah, it pops up to this. And then what, and then it gives you lots of different things to check. So you can check, I like this tool the best, because you can check individual things. The other tools just throw everything at you, fill your screen, and you got to sift through it. This lets you check for headings. Once you figure out your headings, you move on your contracts. Then you move on. You can move down the thing, and you don't get inundated with information and feel overwhelmed. This is what it looks like, though. So we're checking for headings. Okay, I'm looking for heading errors. This window over here pops up tells you that you have a non-consecutive heading level, tells you uh, basically the definition, explanation of why it's a problem, and it points out the relevant code, which is pretty cool. That's cool. But then it also comes up here and puts a little mark on it, just like the other tools do. It says, hey, this is, this is where it's at, right there, bang. And then as you roll down this, those will highlight. So you can, you can take your mouse and scroll over this, and you'll see that highlighted. So you'll know that's where it is. And as you scroll down, this is the only error right here, but as you scroll down, it'll highlight different areas. Uh, got an H4 issue here. This, you actually cannot change. This is uh, the builder that we use. And when you put in this spacer with the line and stuff, and you add the text, it doesn't, it, it automatically makes an H4. So we would have to go in and actually change code to make it different. So you run into problems where sometimes some people's builders, there's nothing you can do. You tell them, listen, you gotta, you gotta switch it up and find a accessible builder or theme, but some stuff can't be That's accessible. That's critical it is, that they use the H4 before the... Now, the problem is, is, is you're not gonna be compliant and you can get sued. I don't think it's that critical of a step in the process. If everything else is looking good and one or two of these things is out of whack, you're still looking fantastic, yeah. but you're still open for a lawsuit because you are not compliant. I think the, yeah, the no. lawsuits though are-, are The lawsuits are- Even title free, right? Which, yes. Which that's, means that if they don't have access to a portion of your website, so if, you know, we're not lawyers. I, I, I would put this one under, I don't know. Um, if you have an H1 over an H4, is that going to open you up to a big lawsuit? Probably not, would be my guess, because again, they're not being denied access to the website because of it. When you're getting into issues, is when they maybe go to use a form and they can't, and so a blind user can't access your form. Right. You know, with an H1 over an H4, they can still see that content. I would think, you know, depending right. maybe on their screen reader. I thought so. that readers, the reason why this is an issue is because readers don't call them. They name them as in like your H4s are, are they're not called H4 in a reader. They're called like you know certain text or something. So if you've labeled something an H2 and it should be H4, it's reading it as a div or a you know or something else when it's actually so it reads it in a different. It doesn't read it in that format. Right. So it doesn't read it down the page like Correct. it should. It'll read it incorrectly. Right. right. So because I you can have your div. That that is that that's why the that's why the rule is in yeah. place. But that does make the, the site inaccessible to them. Then it's, it's just more of a hassle. It's not so much inaccessible because what it is is 
it, the, the screen readers can have their settings to where you read just links, you can read just headers, and, and right. some people have their settings set to where they'll just literally read the headers, like the H1s, they'll just right. work their way down, and that's where it screws things up. So it doesn't make it, 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 it puts a lot of roadblocks in the way. It doesn't completely block the road for them in most cases. But to be, expound, this is why there's such a problem. Yeah. Um, if you're do, we're doing, uh, we're under contract right now with a company. They have to be Section 5 way compliant. So yes, this would affect them. They would not, because every time, they're explaining to us, every time they do a job, a contract with the government, they, they specifically get a form that says their website has to be compliant and they have to sign off on it to even get the bid. So these, so a little thing like this will make a difference to them because they are not compliant. And they have to be to do business. So okay. they can't even put in the bid. They can't even put in the bid. They're lying. You know? The bottom line though is you want to have it fixed anyway. So. So if you move down, again, we've done headings. Now we move on to contrast ratio. Again, this points out the contrast issues. What's really cool about this, well, you can see where it's giving you the contrast ratios. And if you, uh, on our previous talk, we explained you gotta be at least four and a half to one or three to one with length. So you can see all of these are good. This one is not good. I think that's a false positive. But, but the cool thing is, again, you know, I highlighted it down here. It, it tells you the color combination, X, which is white, and, and our version of green has a ratio of 4.01, and you gotta have at least 4.5 to 1. So they say consider using the foreground combination of this. They give you a different green. If you notice, that's a different level of green than this is, and that brings you to compliance of 4.51. That's actually like, pretty cool. It's very cool. It gives you that option. So as a developer, you can say, okay, cool. Bang, copy, paste that color, put it in, and now you're compliant. But again, I think that's a false positive. We're right on the line, because if you use some color pickers, we're good. Some color pickers were not good. And I don't like being on the line because some screens are different, their brightnesses and everything. So, but this code is cool. And again, you know, it points out all your areas. Um, you can scroll down and it'll highlight different ones. Go down to your link text. I've actually fixed this since then. Um, but it tells you your text, which is our phone number up top, is not descriptive enough. And it gives you the text. Like if you were to inspect this, right click and inspect with that highlighted, this is the this is the, the, the code that would pop up. And you can change that. So what I did now, if you go to our site now, stpdesign.com, it'll say, um, what's it say? Like, uh, for more information, contact us at, and the whole thing is a link. So it's not just a phone number. Descriptive link. Like Descriptive so links, you know, this points it out to you. And a really cool, <laughs> I know, I know, they're all really cool. This is a good program. It's got a screener. This is still in beta. This is new. Um, screen reader one. What this does is it lets you scroll over something with a mouse. So I scrolled over this logo. This pops up. This tells you what the screen reader will be reading. Basically, the alt tag. So if you're scrolling over something, a logo, and nothing pops up, this is blank. You're not compliant. You got to fill in alt tags and stuff. So again, these are just testing tools, and all of these are completely free. Wait, you were using your plugin, correct, or was this the? What this is, is our plugin, but we didn't build the Alley software. You know, it's a beautiful thing about WordPress. Um, we found this to be the most useful tool, edit auditing tool. So we wanted, so we took that and we incorporated that into our already existing plugin. So now people, uh, developers who have our so plugin. Use your plugin. And this is new. This is like a few weeks ago. Wow. This was very new. <laughs> I don't remember seeing this. Maybe yeah, there. maybe a month ago. This is yeah. we're all, we're always as we're going. We're always trying to, you know, budget in growth and your stuff. Your plugin on the back end, it just goes through all the images and highlights. It goes. It did. Okay, the, here are the ones that. Right. You did. It did the alt tag. alt tag. You should have had the alt tag, the contrast checker, and the checklist. I so believe. you just kind of do it all in one spot, so therefore you wouldn't come across a logo at this point if you had done the back end. If you had done the back end, this, yeah, right. So when you scroll over it, that's exactly what happened here. Using our stuff, I found out this didn't have the link when I was going through it, added it. So now I'm just testing it. When I scroll over, that's what a screen reader is going to read. Now we do manual tests, which we'll talk about later. So we actually use screen readers, but 
This is just a quick way to do it. You scroll over stuff, find quick problems you can fix on the go. All right, and now we're gonna talk, we're gonna switch gears a little bit and we're gonna move over to how, man, how to manually update or manually audit your website. Um, the two easiest things you can do to manually audit your website is number one, do the keyboard navigation. Unplug your mouse and try to navigate your site using only your keyboard. That's where you're gonna fall into trap. That's where uh, blind users or disabled users are gonna fall into traps. And that's, that's really where you're gonna get sued because at that point your site really is inaccessible. It's not a point, a matter of just hurdles. It really becomes unaccessible if you cannot navigate everything with only your keyboard. Um, and that's using the key, that's using the tab key. So two things, while you use your tab key, arrow keys and enter key to navigate your site, make sure you can reach and use every single function and make sure your tab order and your tab focus follows predictable pattern. Like you were mentioning, as you're tabbing, you're coming down in a predictable manner because you don't want a blind user up here, down here, back here, down here, all over the place. They don't know what's going on. They just don't make no sense. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you make sure everything can be read by assistive technology like screen readers. That's another big thing we do. We go to this website, part of our auditing process, and we, we use a screen reader to go through and check and make sure everything's functioning. That's, uh, these are two very simple steps, but you'll catch so much stuff. We get a little more in depth coming up, but these are the two main things that you can really do on every site, every site, you do these two things, you're, you're doing pretty well. So these are items you want to check manually. Um, page has a logical tab order and focus status parent, like we just talked about. Um, headings don't skip levels, H1 above, H2 above, H3. As we talked about, the visual order on the page follows the DOM order. The, this is important, this is an HTML if you're building code and stuff. I use the example of you have three buttons and the HTML and the DOM, you build your three buttons, the screen reader reads your HTML, it's not reading your screen. So if you build it on the back end, but, but then you know we always add CSS to it, so once you add your CSS, that changes where it's positioned on the front end, but your screen reader is reading it from the back end. So if you got a button, three buttons set up, one, two, and three, and on, once you put it on the front end, you add CSS, I, I think button one should be over here in the right hand corner. While you're scrolling through tab order, the screen reader is gonna go, come, and come down here and it's gonna go button one, button two, button three, and that's not gonna work because it's reading HTML. So just keep that in mind. That's what the DOM order means. Um, your visual order is gonna follow your DOM order. So if you switch that button with the CSS, you wanna go back on the back end and also switch it just so it stays in that logical order. All custom controls should have career roles and labels. This is huge. I get asked about this every single time we give a talk. These are, uh, I think they're accessible, rich, internet um, attributes. What this does is you, there's a lot of potholes basically for accessibility when it comes to buttons and input values and things. Screen readers have a hard time with these. So anything interactive like that, that you have a hard time with, you can add this ARIA attribute to it, which is just a, basically like a strip of code that you'll put in. And then it, what it does is it tells the screen reader, this is something, and then it'll, it'll read the text that you put in. So basically, it lets you almost like, someone had a good uh, analogy or description of it, he said, it just lets you put a alt, alt text in there. So that's what it does. It, it, it tells the screen reader this is a functional item and this is what it is. Because you'll put the ARIA attribute and then you'll add the alt text, basically. And that's huge. That is really, really big for low vision alt, individuals. Alt text for ARIA? There is alt text for an ARIA. It, well, it, 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 they just use that to explain what it does. Like the alt text to a picture explains what that picture is to the screen reader. The ARIA to the to the to that button or function explains to the screen reader what it is. And it does that by two ways. One, saying, hey, this is a function. And two, it reads the text that you add to it. You, you add an alt text to that attribute on the back end. So it says, this is a button, 
and this is what it is. It'll read your, and you put in there, this is a button, or follow this button to go to whatever page, blah, blah, blah. That won't show up on the front end, but when someone's with a screen reader or trying to input, it, try to input something, um, that'll help tremendously. Like, I'm learning a lot of hotels, anything that takes reservations, there's apparently no such thing as a fully accessible plugin that takes reservations. So what, what a lot of people are doing are using these, this technique right here that we're talking about to help with that. So it doesn't make it fully compliant because that individual still needs to navigate it, but it does a lot better job of saying, this is what this is. And, and you can explain in detail what that is. So, the, you know, these are, these are gonna be very important. You're gonna, as you get more into this, you'll, you'll start using these. They're just quick tags and you can just, you know, you just copy paste them, bang, 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 and then add a description for your for your alt tag, and they solve a lot of problems. Okay. And if you want, like afterwards, you can email me. I can send you over because I have a little snippet that we use that, like I said, literally say, we just keep putting it in there and then just change the alt tags because the functions are the same. It just says this is what it is, this is something, and this is what it is. So. Okay, I will. Um, interact development should show their purpose. Um, I would imagine this is forms and whatnot. They should um, show what they are to a screen reader. Uh, again, it has to do with RE roles. Um, Off-screen content is hidden from assistive technology when necessary, such as social media pics and links. Um, this is if you have any off-site content hosted on your, well, it hosted somewhere else, but on your site. For instance, um, Instagram. If you have a bunch of Instagram pictures that auto-feed onto your site, okay? Well, they might not be compliant, so you have to make sure that those are compliant, all right? You need to make sure, or they have to not be visible to screen readers, so that they don't go to a picture that's hosted on Instagram and they have no idea what it is, what that picture is. They would have no clue if, if Instagram isn't compliant with their code. Okay? How do you hide them? I mean, how do you hide it? Well, to a screen reader, how do you block yeah. them? Yeah, yeah. Wow. Great question. <laughs> well, 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 let me, well, let me explain something. What, what this also talks about is if you have a website, say if you, you got multiple columns, you know, you usually have like blog posts on the right or something, you have other stuff on the left and you got your content in the middle. When you, when you squeeze, you take that from desktop to mobile, you got to be careful because what your mobile will do is it'll hide one of those columns. But now what's happening is as they're tabbing through that, it's off screen. Their tab focus is off screen. So they're not, they don't know where it's at. They're looking at, you know, or if you just have a small screen, they're looking for the tab focus, trying to figure out where they are, they will not find it because the tab focus is off screen. So you just gotta make sure when you're, when you're doing stuff like that, that if you have stuff off screen to make sure that that is not like, a screen reader can't get there. You have it set or make sure it's all on screen. Or just get rid of it. Or just get rid of. Don't use those. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Yeah. So, um, all forms work properly and have error handling when necessary. That's pretty pretty straightforward. Um, and visually check for contrast ratio issues, especially text on top of images. This is something that we notice that some of these tools don't pick up. Is when you have say white text and there might be a the sun in the background of, of an image. Well, that white text is over the sun and you can't you can't see it. It's not contrast. There's no contrast ratio there. So some of these tools actually don't pick that up. So visually check that throughout the site. All right, one, our recent project, uh, it was it was white text over an image that I was all pretty good. It was an individual in a suit, but they had cup, you know, they had their white part of their uh, sleeve coming out and, they, and then their hand was kind of pale. So the text that was over just that portion was not contrast ratio. But like I said, the, your, your software is not gonna pick that up, so you still gotta go through and manually check. So what we do is we just change the spacing so where that text won't float over that portion. You know, simple fixes, yeah. but it is what it well, is. That's what's the great thing is a lot of this is just simple fixes. <laughs> yes, so. yes, and that's why we try to really implore uh, developers and agencies and designers to keep these in mind as you're designing and building your website, and you won't run into these problems. If, because it won't add much time if, if you just know it's gotta hit a certain contrast ratio. As you're building it, you'll be able to, to fix your issues really quick. Um, a couple of free screen readers are um, NVDA, uh, which is actually built by two blind developers. 
So who, who better to make the screen reader? Um, and another one is Chromebox. It, Chromebox isn't that great, frankly, but it might be the easiest to actually activate and use and get a sense of what a screen reader is, because it's just an extension to Google Chrome. 